Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking the wooden floor material from the last video and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel. First though, let's take a look at the files we'll be needing. We're going to need floor smudges type A medium 001 and gun scratches 003, both of which I already have saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link to them below this video. Okay, let's head over to Cinema 4D. So this is our finished uh, render from last time. Um, if you'll remember, we brought in the majority, uh, or the majority of the work was done by our material converter. It brought in all the textures. Um, all we did was, where am I going? Let's just go in. There we are. <laughs> um, all we did was in the gloss color correction uh, node that's already uh, brought in by the converter, we made some minor adjustments to this multiply value to uh, to make our floor more shiny. Um, and that was literally it. And it's this area that we're going to be working on today. But before we get started, I want to go over exactly what it is we're about to do. We're going to be taking our original roughness map, where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny. Um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, they'll, they'll be, the reflections will be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so let's get to work. First I'm going to make this a little bigger. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in a texture. Or an image, I believe they, Arnold likes to be called it, yes. So an image. And now we need to pick our image. So we need the floor smudges, 4K, and we have a variety of different options. The one I'm going to use is this one. White smudges on a black background, but it's also a 16-bit uh, texture, which means you just get uh, a bigger color depth and, and more more detail from the texture. So let's open that up, and then under the settings at the side here, you'll see color space. We want to change this to linear. Um, as a general rule, if a texture contributes towards the color of a material, like the color one, obviously, <laughs> and also reflection, they would be set to sRGB. But in the cases of things like gloss maps, normal maps, displacement maps they would be set to linear. You don't want any gamma corrections applied to these textures. We want the raw data. Um, and it's the same with an overlay like this. So remember to change that to linear. And that's it. We've our, our texture's now in place. Now what we need to do is find a way to have this influence our original gloss map. Or in, in actual fact, it's a, it's a, at this point, it's a roughness map because it's being inverted by this node. So. What we want to do is add in a layer, uh, there we go, layer RGB A. Drag that in. Now, if you've worked with Arnold before, you may be wondering why we're not just bringing in a, a composite node um, that's been depreciated and, and replaced by this layer RGB A, which was actually news to me until recently. <laughs> but that's the correct one to use. And then we're going to feed in our original roughness map into layer one, like so, and then feed that into our roughness input of our shader. And at this point, that will mean that there's no change whatsoever. Okay. Now we'll take the output of our, I'm going to name it first actually, so we don't get confused, our smudges map, and feed that into the next layer of our, sh of our little mix thing. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So when I go into this now, we we have our uh, various options to decide how this this texture is mixed um, into our roughness map. And the one we want is screen because screen's a really good way of taking the bright areas of a map and overlaying them onto another map. So that's the one we want to use. Uh, and the rest of these settings we can leave as is. So what we'd expect now from a render, and I'm hoping we do when I <laughs> when I hit the render button, is to see uh, a lot of smudges on our floor. Uh, 
Yes, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Lots of nice smudges on our floor. Obviously the effect's way too strong and we will be turning it down. Because we are after a very sort of subtle effect here. We don't want our floor to look dirty. We just want it to look used, yeah? Because uh, no surface is, is perfect after it's been used. There's no matter how many times you clean it or whatever, there's always going to be an impression of use on it. And that's what we're trying to replicate here. So let's go back to our uh, node setup here and talk about how we're going to to control the strength of this. Now, we could just adjust the screen value, yeah? And um, that'd be probably the most efficient way. Um, alternatively, you could add in a, a multiply uh, node here um, if you wanted to keep the, to keep everything separate. But we'll just go by the, the route of adjusting the, the mix value of this screen. Right, so the next step is to bring in our scratches. Now this will be affecting a different part of the shader the normal map. So this is our existing normal map, um, which we want to keep. We want all the height information from this to remain as is. We just want to add to it. So let's bring in another image. This time, gun scratches. Uh, where have you gone? There they are. And again, we have a bunch of different choices. Um, I'm going to bring in this 16-bit one. Um, we will need to invert it. So depending on what way you want to go, you could bring in the black scratches on the white background because that's that's perfect for a bump map because the black areas on a white map will have the appearance of cutting in to a surface whereas white bits on a black background will bump out. And in the case of scratches, we, we don't want that. We want it to cut in. But I want to, I want to choose the overlay 16-bit one because it's a higher uh, quality texture. So what we'll do is we'll take that and then invert the strength for ourselves. So let's call this one scratches, like so. And then we need to change that to linear, like we did before. And yeah, we're almost there. So now I'm going to bring in a color correct, like so. And use that to invert the texture. So now this texture is black scratches on a white background, but still 16 bits, so we're still getting that, that better quality. And then what I'm going to bring in is a bump 2D node, and I'll place that here. Now what this will allow us to do is feed in the existing normal map, like so, and we can connect that up to our shader. Um, so now, with how we've got this at the moment, nothing will change, we've still got all the information from the normal map. Um, going into our shader, which is what we want, but this new node gives us the ability to add to it. So if I take in this uh, bump map and place it in the bump map input, and then go into this shader, we now have this little bump height uh, figure that we can change, and we'll, we'll leave that as is for now to see what we uh, what we get by default. So with that in place, let's hit render again. Right. So we have a couple of problems here. The first being, obviously, the strength is too high. So we, yeah, we, we want to lower that a little bit. Um, but also the scaling. We, we want more scratches, uh, more smaller scratches. Um, so let's go and address both of those problems. First of all, the strength, because that's nice and easy. <laughs> let's go to the, the bump uh, node again. And we'll just change this to 0.1 centimeter. So we're 10% of where we were. Probably even that would be too high, but yeah. That's what, we'll, that's what we'll try for now. And now we need to adjust the um, tiling of this scratches texture. Uh, you can see here we've got a, a scale here. So if I change this to a value of say five, I think that's going in the right direction, <laughs> uh, and render again, hopefully we'll see um, a, a, the, the result we're after. Yeah, not too bad at all. So the scratches are now the sort of size that I was after, and the strength is about right. I might still tone them down just a little bit. Um, I'd probably slightly adjust the scaling of the smudges as well. They could do with being just a little bit larger. Um, so maybe instead of the tiling of one, maybe 0.7, something like that. Um, but yeah, yeah, for the purpose of a tutorial, I think we can call that job done. So in summary, we've taken our wooden floor material and we've added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel.